Welcome back everyone to more from the Sable Eyes. I'm Mitch and today we're going to be taking a look at a darkness type V-Star that hasn't gotten enough love and that is Drapion V-Star. A very, very interesting attacker that I think could theoretically be a lower tier kind of fun deck for people to play on the standard ladder on PTCGO or PTCG Live. Drapion V-Star is a 270 HP dark type V-Star Pokemon with the attack Big Bang Arm, which is fantastic fantastic name for an attack, frankly. It does 250 damage for two dark and a colorless energy, and deals 10 less damage for every damage counter on this Drapion. That means that if you have a fresh Drapion coming into the active, plus a choice belt, then you can be dealing 280 damage in a single hit, taking knockouts on any V-Star in the format. Add on to that the effect Effect, uh, the effect of its Hazard Star, which effectively poisons and paralyzes your opponent's Pokémon, and suddenly you are in a position where you can deal just that little bit of extra damage or slow down your opponent to try and win a game. And if you are playing against a VMAX Pokémon with 310, 20, or 30 HP, then you can theoretically take a knockout in a couple of turns because you deal extra poison damage with that particular V-Star ability. A very, very versatile and cool V-Star Pokemon that can take some big knockouts, it's definitely worth taking a look at. Now, on top of that, we have the brand new Drapion V, which is normally not worth talking about, but when you consider the fact that no matter what, it is capable of taking big knockouts on Pokemon like Mew VMAX, I think that Drapion V is worth talking about. It has the ability Wild Style, which means that for every battle style Pokemon on your opponent's side of the field, whether that be Rapid, Single, or Fusion Strike, this Pokemon attacks for one less colorless energy, and that can theoretically power up its attack, which deals 190 damage for 4 energy. But if you've got no, uh, if you've got no energy cost attack associated with it, you just deal 190. Just deal 190 damage. It's pretty good. Right, just get that knockout. Deal with the deal with the fact that your Drapion's probably getting knocked out later, and take those few prizes. I really like it. I think it's cool. Let's talk about the other attackers in the deck, though. We have Galarian Moltres V, a very very popular V Pokemon in the standard format with Dire Flame Wings, allowing us to accelerate Dark energy onto it from the discard pile once per turn, obviously. And we also have Galarian Moltres, not V. It's the regular one. This has Malevolent Charge, the ability, which allows you to attach up to two Dark Energy from your hand to this Pokemon when you play it onto the bench. And Fiery Wrath, the attack for two Dark and a Colorless, deals 20 plus 50 more for every prize that your opponent has taken in the late game. You can do some massive knockouts with Galarian Moltres. Now, there's lots of Dark Energy that needs to be attached for all of these different attacks, and that is why we're going to be playing four copies of Dark Patch. We can use those to accelerate Darkness Energy from our discard pile to our benched Dark Pokemon, and that can theoretically get us into some very strong attacks in the early game. We're going to search those out with Mysterious Tail Mew, a really strong engine to try and keep ourselves running. And worst case scenario, if we do find ourselves in a position where we need to set our board up a little bit better, we do have one copy of Princess's Curtain Deancey to stop our opponent from bossing any of our basic Pokemon. We can put this in the active, maybe even attach an energy and spike draw for 20 damage, drawing two cards, but more importantly, protecting our bench sitters. I really like this deck. I think it's a lot of fun. The Bird Keeper engine, which I haven't even talked about, means that you can get lots and lots of cards and Mysterious Tail pretty frequently. Let's take it out onto the standard ladder and see if we can't win a couple of games. Game one then, let's see if we can get ourselves a couple of wins with this Drapion deck. We'll uh, start off with a VIP Battle Pass, I think, and grab ourselves Drapion and Radiant Greninja. We'll use that to get a little bit of consistency with concealed cards, plus we'll be able to put some Dark Energy in the discard pile for Dark Patch, which would be great. And we can use the Capture Energy here to grab ourselves a second Drapion. Maybe Deancey would be worth it. I like the second Drapion, though. Then I think we just play down some cards here. We'll put the Choice Belt on the Drapion. We'll put the Dark Patch on the Drapion. Uh, and then we can scoop up the Manaphy and pop that Mew into the active. Mysterious Tail activating here, searching the top five cards of our deck. Um, sorry, top seven, six, 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 however many it is. Grabbing an item card, scoop up, that's the way to go. We'll pass the turn, and that is a pretty solid effort. 
a pretty pretty solid effort that one. Where's the top of my thing? Is my thing working? Beautiful. Everything's everything seems to be fine. Um, I feel like every time I set up to film a video, I sit further and further to the right on my setup, and it's got nothing to do with the camera location because the camera is always in the same place. Because like you'll see if I if I like try and turn it, you can kind of see like there's not a huge amount of flex on the camera. But I feel like every time I'm setting up, I'm like more this way. It's my turn. Better, better focus up. Playing against Arceus here. Um, Mysterious Tail again will let us look at the top couple of cards. An air balloon is very, very nice. I like the fact that if we do find ourselves access to an attack this turn, we can theoretically KO this Arceus. But the problem is... I don't have a supporter, and it's not really a good way for us to search for one here. I need to use this Mew again, and hope the Mysterious Tail can get us into a Quick Ball, which it did. Beautiful, now we can Quick Ball away the VIP Battle Pass, and go for a Crobat, which is a really important part of this Dex engine. We'll play down the Moltres, and then the Crobat. We've got three cards to try and find a Switch Out... And also a copy of Drapion V-Star. We did not get either of those. I think we might concealed cards, maybe. We'll do some thinning first. Then we can grab out another card that we might need later. Maybe another Crobat, to be brutally honest. And then we'll concealed cards. This is going to be awkward because we're going to need to draw like three cards off of this concealed cards. That's not going to do the job. Okay, well, I mean, we, we keep whiffing the attack, which is disappointing. We have all the pieces that we would need to get an attack with Drapion V-Star. We are just missing the Drapion V-Star. So, there's not much that can realistically be done about that. Apart from playing a different amount of Drapions, maybe? Or just getting lucky. We've already seen half of our deck. Like, I mean, we are unlucky to not get the Drapion V-Star. Which, to be brutally honest, I would have liked to have seen. I would have liked to have taken a knockout. But now we have to really fight. This Arceus V-Star, at the moment, is easy enough for us to knock out. But if they search for a copy of Gardevoir, Radiant Gardevoir, or even a Lake Acuity, which could be very useful for them, that would mean that we would need to use our V-Star ability, which I don't want to do. I would really rather not do that. On the plus side, we guarantee that we get to use Raihan next turn, provided, of course, that they do take a knockout. They don't have to take a knockout. No, but I think it is in their best interest to do that. Although, I started talking about what I was going to do next turn, which means I am going to be Marnied. So we will shuffle our hand to the bottom of our deck and uh, draw four absolute trash cards. Those are awful. They're garbage. They are garbage. All right, well... I didn't think that it was going to be easy when I elected to play Drapion V-Star. I genuinely didn't think it was going to be easy. Um, I didn't think it was going to be this awful, where we just don't draw into any of the cards that we need to be successful. At least we got to look at these ones now. Uh, it was going to be a long time just top-decking out of this, this horrific set of cards that we have, but um, we will wait and see. It looks like the Starbirth happened here, and the Gardevoir came down, so... Making our life just that little bit more difficult with the Drapion V-Star, we will need to use the ability to knock out the Arceus. Either that, we gust the Arceus V on the bench, which would be my preferred option. There's the Drapion. Thank you very much, game. We get given the Drapion, at least. Um, okay, Bird Keeper's fine. Uh, this means that we can potentially do a little bit of, uh, we can do a little bit of fancy play here. We can retreat into the Mew, uh, and then use Mysterious Tail and grab ourselves an item. I like the idea of a Cross Switcher. That's very good. I like that a lot. Um, we could definitely use that right now, but to be honest, I think I'm just going to commit to knocking out the active with Drapion. Um, although, to be brutally honest, maybe it was just better to go for the knockout on the Arceus. I'm very worried about our opponent putting down Lake Acuity or even a copy of Big Charm. So I don't want this Arceus in the active to survive. I would like them to whiff for a bit. So we'll Hazard Star, we will paralyze and poison our opponent, and then we will Big Bang Arm, 260 damage, and the extra 30 damage from the poison will take the knockout. And there you go, first two prizes go to Drapion here. Of course, we don't count them you getting knocked out in our prize calculations. One thing that I would like to see 
is those uh, those animations. I love those animations. I think they're really, really cool. Out of cur uh, curiosity, how do you feel about them? I know that the status condition thing is a bit contentious, but I think it is really clear when the Pokemon in the active is paralyzed. It's really clear when they're poisoned. I don't think that there's any need to spin cards around anymore to identify those things. The game does a good enough job of showing us that itself. So I'm very happy with the way that particular interaction has happened at the moment. And hopefully, uh, it only gets better as time goes on. Because you just get used to the fact that the card's facing you. In fact, I barely notice it at all anymore. Like, I've played the game for a couple of months now, and I very, very rarely even notice that my opponent's active is looking at me. It makes no difference, even remotely, in my mind. Which is, uh, you know, maybe it's a, maybe it's something that you care about greatly? I personally don't, and that's a-okay. I don't like the fact that that big charm is on the benched Arceus. I don't like the fact that I'm not going to be able to knock out anything with this Drapion. This is one of the big weaknesses of Drapion V-Star is that it just cannot deal with taking any damage. I now need to get a fresh Drapion here in order to get an attack off. I could theoretically retreat this Drapion and put some Dark Energy in the discard pile and then use Moltres to attack. That could be a way forward. I do need to take two prizes though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to discard the Capture Energy and find two Dark Energies in its place. What do we do? How do we how do we find ourselves a knockout here? Deancey might potentially be the answer. So let's go for the Deancey. I'm going to attach to it and then retreat out of the Drapion into the Deancey. The reason for this is I cannot get a clean knockout on this Arceus with a Drapion. The Gardevoir makes it too difficult. Um, do I grab that energy? I don't think I do. Now, the Gardevoir only works on reducing damage from Pokemon V. So, Deancey here can come into the active, can spike draw for 20, and put that Arceus potentially within range. It's not quite there. Right? It's not quite there, because if they play down like Acuity, or if they play down a Big Charm, then maybe we whiff. But, I do like the fact that we have the option now, if our opponent doesn't have those cards, that we could theoretically deal enough damage to take a knockout. And it looks like just a Starbirth, and that's perfectly fine by me. Knocking out our Deancey is not a big problem. Now all we need to do is get enough energy on our attackers to actually get a KO. At the moment, we have Dark Energy in our hand, no problems. What we need is a Dark Patch. We do not have a Dark Patch yet. Let's Ultra Ball. We'll get rid of these two VIP Battle Passes, and we're going to go for our friend Crobat. There are two Dark Patches in the deck. We have one in our hand. We need to hit one. So let's use Dark Patch now. We'll put the energy on the Drapion V-Star with no damage on it. I will die Flame Wings to put some energy onto Moltres on the bench. Then I will... I guess I just attach to the Drapion, right? Uh, and I guess we're just going to need... Oh my god, this is really bad. I don't want to Crobat for two. Crowbatting for two, maybe. I think we just need to cross switcher and give ourselves as good a chance as possible. Um, if we put, oh, we can't put the Drapion in the active because we need to use the, we need to use the Dark Patch. Okay. Um, well, let's just draw it and see if we get it first. Let's just see if we can get there. We have not gotten there. We've got Birdkeeper. Birdkeeper into it. Birdkeeper into the Dark Patch. Into the Greninja. No Dark Patch still. Still no Dark Patch. Still no Dark Patch. Still no Dark Patch. Why? Oh my god, we had such a high chance. There was two in there. Okay, what's the next what's the next thing we do? Um Do we retreat and just attack with this Moltres? I think that's fine. Like it doesn't feel good, but at least it's an option. Um we'll deal 170 to this Arceus. That's so bad. If we did have the Dark Patch there, there's two of them in the deck, then we would have been able to knock out the Arceus on the bench. Instead, we have to settle for a half hit on an Arceus that isn't evolved. Could potentially knock out our Moltres this turn. And that's going to be really bad for us. Um, 
And we only had seven cards left in the deck, so we still had a pretty good chance of getting it. Hopefully, our opponent is similarly unlucky, although they do play the Inteleon engine. Playing the Ultra Ball just means that they get the Arceus, so... Not ideal. Not ideal, but that's okay. We're going to work through it. We're going to work through this together. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Uh, Sharon's Care and Roxanne going there. Okay, so our opponent obviously fairly confident that they're going to get the win, even without their support that's going to heal their Pokemon. That's completely reasonable, I think, based on what I've seen here. They're going to knock out the Moltres, and we are in a position now where we need to take two knockouts to win this game. Our opponent needs one copy of Boss, and that will be that. Um, we will promote our Greninja. And I'll just, uh, I'll just hope for the... Oh my goodness. Oh my, are you serious? The next card was Dark Patch. The next card was Dark Patch. Okay. Well, we'll play the Dark Patch. We'll put the energy on the Drapion. Um, and then I think it is probably as simple as... Uh, we'll Concealed Cards. We'll give us access to what we need. We'll play down the Mew. We're just going to go. We're going to find this last Dark Patch. We've definitely got it. We've definitely got it in the deck. Let's grab it out just to prove a point. We'll grab that Dark Patch. We will use the Dark Patch on the Drapion V that doesn't have a choice belt. Um, just to power it up. I think our big issue here is going to be that we won't have time to win the game. But in saying that, we can cross switch around the benched Arceus with 260 HP remaining and put our Drapion with a choice built in the active. We can attack with Big Bang Arm for the KO. And if our opponent whiffs a gust, right, if they don't have access to boss's orders, we will win the game next turn. And now it's even more guaranteed. The boss in our hand means that we do win if they cannot knock out the active. Um, or they can't get a KO on Drapion or Crobat. I didn't realize they hadn't used Starbirth yet. They can literally just search for the boss. They can literally just search for the boss. Oh, I didn't realize that they hadn't Starbirthed. Uh, okay, well, I mean, hey, listen... We had a whiff turn. If we had have got the KO then, then maybe there's a game. Oh, so close. Arceus v starts just so tanky. It's so difficult to beat. There's the KO from them, and we lose. But you know what? We're going to take it out again. We're going to see if we can get a win, because I refuse to give up on Drapion. I think it is capable of victory. And to be brutally honest, I just hate the defeat sign. I need to get rid of that. Starting up game two, our opponent has a Crobat in the active and an Ultra Ball is being played. Water Energy and a Lost Vacuum into the discard pile. So what are we looking at here? Like a Palkia? Like a Curum, maybe? Could potentially be a Lost Box, potentially? Not sure. A Palkia coming out limits the amount of options that we are looking at. We've got a Crobat and a Palkia. I'm thinking maybe Curum. And I think Curum's beatable. I think we can do that. I think we can beat Kurum. We've got a battle pass in hand, which is good. And they've passed with a very small bench. Okay, so I think we are in with a red hot chance here. Let's go for the battle pass. We'll grab ourselves Zvi Drapion. That is two, ladies and gentlemen, two Drapions. We will play down the capture energy onto Deancey. Um, and then grab ourselves our Greninja. I think actually Manaphy is probably not a bad idea because I don't want my opponent to take two prizes on Mew and also Deancey. Plus we can Quick Ball for Greninja if we want it. I'm going to grab the Dark Patch here on Mew and then we scoop up the Mew. Chuck the Deancey into the active. Play that Mew back down and then we will Spike Draw. Do we Quick Ball first? I think we just Spike Draw here. That seems fine. So we're going to attack into this Crobat. I'm not too worried about this Crobat. I'm not worried about the damage. It's more about drawing the cards. And as you can see, our hand's actually looking pretty good. Quick Ball into Dark Energy, plus Dark Patch, plus Choice Belt, plus Double Drapion. We're looking at a Crobat for 6 turn here, which is not half bad. That is not half bad at all. And our opponent is playing uh, from behind. They are pretty far behind here. 
We don't have the Greninja, which is okay, but I don't want to lose both Deancey and Mew to a uh, Radiant Greninja's Moonlight Shuriken attack. That would be very, very difficult to deal with. Hopefully, hopefully, we are able to get a relatively strong game off here. Our opponent appears to be going quite slowly. They've Greninja'd into a couple of cards, but they didn't Quick Ball for Crobat. I think they quick balled anyway they didn't find crowbat which means they probably don't have any more ways to draw cards which is good we'll see how we go also apologies I'm quite tired right now as i'm recording this it is approximately like 11 o'clock at night and this video goes up at 2 a.m in the morning and i need to make sure that it's out because i've i've said to myself that i'm gonna do three monday wednesday friday every week Make sure we knock out those three. But I will say this. If you're still watching and you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I would appreciate it. Leave a like. Because when our next set comes out, we are going to see a few more videos coming out, especially around the types of cards that people like to see. Those rogue decks. Like this one. Like Drabium. Let's quick ball. We're going to get rid of a dark energy. It seems counterintuitive, but I do want to be able to use dark patch. Uh, that's obviously quite important in this game. I want to attach a choice belt as well. I would love to attach an energy to the Drapion, but I don't think I can really afford to just attach. Can I? It's kind of awkward. I think I just want a Crobat. We'll draw four cards and we will see what we get. And that's a couple of good ones. The issue is I need a copy. Oh my goodness. Cross switcher. Maybe cross switch is enough. This is such a weird situation to be in because I need to attack with a drapey on this turn. I think if I attach to mana... F oh, this is such a weird situation. Let's bird keeper into mana fee and okay, well that's not like, that's not a huge amount there. That's not very good at all. We're going to ra uh, we're going to retreat sorry into Mew again and then probably Pass. Not an ideal turn. But definitely acceptable. I mean, we've done something. And that is all that I can ask. It's all I can ask. We're getting closer and closer, by the way, to Pokemon TCG Live being released in your area. That's coming up at the end of November. By all accounts, we should be seeing Pokemon TCG Live released in a global beta by the end of November. And that is only a few months away. A few weeks away, even. Months away. It's a few weeks away. And once we've played Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which is only a couple of weeks away as of recording, we'll have plenty of time to get into live and explore this game, which I think is really good. I think it's just as good, if not better, than any other Pokemon related TCG experience online. I think that it's better than PTCGO. I don't care that we don't have training anymore. I think it's actually way better for free to play players. And if you want to hear more about my thoughts on PTCG Live, then you can uh, tune in to a podcast in a couple of days. I'm going to be on the, uh, the Shuffle Squads podcast talking about this exact thing about Pokemon TCG Live and how much better I think it is than some of the options floating around at the moment. Alright, we're going to chuck the Crobat into the active. We do need to find a copy of Dark Patch. Let's go into the Manaphy. There's the Dark Patch. Okay, so we have it. We have Dark Patch. We can attach. We can put down an energy. Now the issue here is we're going to need to use Cross Switcher, but you know what? I would rather take two prizes than none. We'll take the cure amount before it becomes a massive VMAX. Let's hit the big bang arm here. 280 damage would have knocked out the Palkia. We just couldn't get out of the active whilst still attacking. We'll check out our prizes and see what we've got. A Drapion and a Crobat, both very useful. I like that. I like the fact that we've got Bird Keeper in hand as well. I don't like the fact that we have two copies of Battle Pass. That is very frustrating. Um, but we're okay. We are alright here. There's not a huge amount that we are worried about. I am concerned that we don't get two more Dark Patches. Um, we will be in a bit of strife, but that's okay. And um, to be brutally honest, as long as we knock this Palkia out at some stage... 
The game's going to be relatively easy for us. We can knock the Crobat V out with a Moltres, I think. It should be doable. And remember, of course, we do have Baby Moltres as another potential option. So the last two prizes shouldn't be an issue. It's, it's really, it's just the first couple that are a big problem. Uh, a Melanie from our opponent here, setting up that Palkia with three energy on it. Obviously not a huge amount of good support cards in our opponent's hand, if that's what they are doing. Dunno, we'll have to wait and see. Trading Court coming down means that we can access some cards that were in our discard pile. Um, if we do lose energy, we can get those out. Of course, we have Trading Court in our own hand, so it's not the end of the world. Hello, chair. Oh boy, I shouldn't be so tired. I am, I am quite tired. I'm, I'm going to apologize to you right now. I'm feeling it in my bones. I'm an old man. I'm an old man playing Pokemon cards here, and it's... It's tough. What can I say? 200 damage on this Drapion V. That means... On the Drapion V star, I should say. That means, even if... I am not knocked out and my opponent doesn't take a couple of prizes, I am still effectively KO'd. Um, that's pretty much... Pretty much no other way to say it here. That, that Drapion is effectively dead. So we are going to Quick Ball. We're going to get rid of the Battle VIP path. And I think now it is time to grab ourselves. Well, actually, we could just grab Greninja. I think it's Greninja. Let's go for Greninja. I was going to say we can grab ourselves our Moltres and start setting it up. But I think I'd like to discard some energy. That seems pretty reasonable. I can use the Capture Energy to grab myself the Moltres. I think that's perfectly fine. And then we can use Concealed Cards to discard Dark Energy in the hopes that we eventually find ourselves access the Dark Patch, and we have. Okay, so, it's all it's all happening here. We've got, we've got lots of options. We've got lots of options. We can Dark Patch onto the Drapion. We can use Moltres to power itself up. We can use Training Court. The only thing that we can't realistically do is attack this turn, so I think we just Dark Patch and get ourselves set up. That one Dark Energy can go on Drapion V, and I think now we might need to use Hazard Star. Now, we're not using it to get the damage. We don't really care about the damage per se. The big thing for me is I hope that our opponent's Paralysis stops them from doing anything this turn. I think that's all that we're going to do. We're going to leave it there. We're going to look at these beautiful animations, the Poison and the Paralysis, which you can very clearly see. We don't need to change the position of the camera or all the cards. You can very obviously see that that Pokemon is paralyzed and poisoned. And we're going to hope, beyond hope, that they cannot switch out. Now I know, Kiram VMAX does not traditionally play a huge amount of Switch cards, so maybe we get lucky. Maybe we get lucky. They have 20 cards left in deck, plus 10 in their hand. They are looking at one third of the cards that they have access to. I am hopeful that we can keep ourselves alive long enough to stop our opponent from being able to do pretty much anything. And if we've kept this Palkia paralyzed, then I think it's actually going to be relatively easy in a sense, because we can come through and just win the game at, uh, at some point relatively soon. Another Kiram. So again, no Crobats. There's a Curum VMAX. And potentially discard a card if they want to. Um, this is uh, it's pretty close. Primate Wisdom will be the last card that they search for, potentially. What are we doing? Do they have the switch? Do they go down to the parallel para paralysis? Paralysis. Why can I not say what's bucket? What are you doing back there? My cat's just going crazy back there. Oh, also, I will I will show you something. I will show you something. I will I will do my turn and then I will show you something. I think I'll do my very best. This this happened to me today, and I'm very excited because Pokemon is it's fun. So we're gonna we're gonna see how we go. I, I no I'll I'll show it to you at the end. I'll show it to you at the end. I should I should play the game. They didn't get out. Okay, they didn't get out of the paralysis. They didn't. They didn't get out of the paralysis, which means we have a chance. We can attach an energy to Drapion. That seems right. Uh, and then we can get into the active with a scoop up net. We can... Well, actually, what we should do is we should concealed cards first and see. What do we find? Birdkeeper, eh? Birdkeeper, eh, buckaroo? It's 
Pretty good, we can do that. Um, we can play that Bird Keeper and put ourselves into the active with Drapion V-Star. The best part here about the fact that we've already done damage with Hazard Star is we don't need to stress about the extra damage from Choice Belt. We can simply attack for 250. But first, I'm going to get some value out of this uh, Concealed Card. So we're going to put an Energy into the discard pile so that our Moltres next turn can attack. We can do it again if we want to. I think that's perfectly fine. We want to draw as many cards as we can. I am looking for a Cross Switcher or a Boss's Orders for next turn in order to win the game. So we're going to Big Bang Arm, take the knockout on the Palkia, and we are going to hope, beyond all hope, that we manage to find Boss or a copy of Cross Switcher next turn. We're going to do it. We're going to get those cards. We're going to get them. We're going to get them. It's as simple as it's as simple as that. We're just I mean we're going to have to get them, aren't we? Frankly. We we're going to have to get them. I'm concerned now. There's seven cards left in deck. I don't have a draw supporter. Um well then we've got Raihan. Oh, I don't know if there's actually a cross switcher in the deck. I didn't check. Oh, if there is, oh, I don't want to use Raihan because I need to use Boss if there's not. Oh, no, I'm going to need to make decisions. Okay. What have we got? There's two Cross Switcher here. Oh, there's definitely one more in the list. Got a two in nine chance of the second, of the fourth Cross Switcher being prized because I just didn't check. <laughs> I didn't check. Why well, didn't check? Why did I check it? I mean, we can draw five. Oh, actually, we can draw five cards. I actually, now that I'm thinking at it, I'm looking at it. I, I think I'm looking at this right. I think I'm actually guaranteed. If there's cross switcher in the deck, I'm guaranteed. I think, because it looks like my opponent's gearing up for a big Kyurem V Max. I'm gonna take a big knockout here and hope that there's no way that I can gust around them. That's probably their play. And if that's the case, we have seven cards left in deck. I'm going to draw one next turn. I think we have the cards in hand. If there's a cross switcher to be able to win the game. Now, I mean, if there is a cross switcher, I can just Raihan and guarantee it. But I don't know that there is a cross switcher. I need to be sure that there's a cross switcher. And in order to be sure, I'd need to find some way to search the deck, or I would need to draw through every single card that I have access to. So, let's see how we go about this. I'm going to do this on the fly. We are going to hopefully find the card that we need to be successful. Greninja to the active. Just top deck the boss or the cross switcher. No. Okay. We start by playing down a Mew. Okay. We're going to concealed cards. Just draw into the cards we win. The cards so we won. Alright, so we don't need to worry about it. I was going to say, we can like... Scoop up and go into Mew and then Cross Switcher if we, if, yep, yeah, but we're just not going to worry about it. We can Dark Patch, we can Dire Flame Wings, we can scoop up the Radiant Greninja, we can chuck the Moltres into the active, use Boss's Orders to bring up the Crobat from the bench, and then Aura Burn for 220 damage, taking the last two prizes. That is a very, very strong win against Kurum. I think that is a pretty effective way that uh, Drapion can take prizes. I like it. It's pretty solid. So thank you very much for watching. Appreciate you coming past. And if you have stuck around, I promised I'd show you something. Look at this. Oh, I got a brand new Switch. It's very exciting. I am so keen for Scarlet and Violet. Look at that box. Oh, the Switch itself looks so good. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to play Scarlet and Violet on this. Very, very excited. Very excited that these people are still channel members, by the way. I appreciate you sticking around. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and click on this bloody video over here. It's Mill with Chandelure. You'll love it. If you like this, you'll like this. If you like this, you'll, you'll like this. So click it. See so how you go.